Hey everyone, this is Paul, Texas Street Preacher. And uh, if anyone needs to contact me, just wanted to say right off the bat, if anyone wants to contact me, uh, my email is texasstreetpreacher at gmail.com. Feel free to email me if you'd like, or uh, contact me through the comments section here in, on YouTube. Um, just, uh, just also to make everyone aware, I know I've said this before, but just a reminder, uh, any preaching videos that I'm going to be doing, that I'm going to be uh, posting uh, of my street preaching will from now on be on my second channel, Texas Street Preacher 2. And uh, the reason for that is, is because uh, my preaching on the streets is uh, very controversial, um, you know, because I address uh, subjects like the, uh, you know, the jabberoo, the jab, uh, things like that, that can get me, uh, get my channel flagged uh, and get strikes and uh, so I've set up Texas Street Preacher 2 basically as a decoy channel uh, so if that gets taken down it's not a big deal but I want to keep this uh, original channel up uh, mainly to continue to expose the local church's cult with uh, Witness Lean Watchman Knee and that is kind of uh, that's kind of been the main function of, of uh, my channel nowadays and uh, that kind of goes into a topic I wanted to address real quick before I get into the topic of the video uh, is the demographic of the subscribers. You know, when I first started this channel, uh, Texas Street Preacher, it was to uh, put my preaching online, to encourage others to be bold for Christ, to uh, warn sinners, to lead them to repentance, you know, to be uh, uh, an example to others, to help others to be street preachers as well. Uh, but in, I think it was 2019, around May of 2019, when I started doing videos to also expose Witness Lee, um, I would say since then, the majority of my subscribers uh, are really uh, people who were involved with the local church's cult or uh, who have loved ones who were involved with the cult. And, you know, and the subscribers, they uh, subscribe to my channel because they want uh, clarity and they want to know more about this, this group and to know uh, and find out what exactly is wrong with them. And uh, so I think, uh, so anyway, regarding the demographic of my subscribers, even though my channel is called Texas Street Preacher, I would say the majority of my subscribers are people who have either been involved with the local church's cult, they still are involved with it, or they have a loved one. Uh, who they're concerned about, you know, that's been involved with it. Um, so, but this video is more uh, geared towards uh, people who are interested in street preaching, who want to street preach, uh, or who like watching uh, street preachers. But I would say uh, that I hope that all my subscribers see this video and that a lot of other people see this video, because this video really isn't just for street preachers or people who aspire to street preach. It is for everyone because there's going to be a lot of uh, issues that I'm going to address in this video that are principles, guiding principles uh, from the Bible that will help keep us in line uh, and, and walking in God's way, not man's way. And these are principle guiding principles that will really help protect people, uh, including preachers, from doing anything uh, uh, that could hurt them or hurt others from doing things in a reckless way. So uh, again, this video is more geared towards my street preaching subscribers, but really it's for everybody. And I hope everybody does watch it. And uh, if this video is a blessing to you, I hope that you would uh, share it. Because uh, again, this is another video that I'm doing where hardly anybody is talking. I, I've never heard anybody do a video on this. I've never heard anybody even talk about it or address the matter. So I know that's anecdotal. I know I have limited, you know, uh, experience. I'm just one person, but you know, I've seen a lot of people talk about a lot of things, especially in the Christian sphere. I'm familiar with a lot of people and a lot of teachers and a lot of messages, and uh, I've never heard anyone talk about this. So here we go. I'm going to start uh, talking uh, about, I'm going to start addressing the topic of this video, which is, uh, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I recently saw a video, I think it was from Dory Love, who's a, you know, well-known uh, street preacher, and uh, apparently one of Dory Love's followers or someone who is associated with him uh, was killed. One of the, the street preachers was killed uh, while he was preaching. 
and he was uh, killed, you know, around like 2 a.m. I think he was in, sounded like he was like in a downtown city, and he was killed uh, at 2 a.m. I, I can't remember if he was stabbed or not, but anyway, he was he was killed, and he has children, and uh, it was very sad, you know. The guy was trying to do something for the Lord, and he got killed. Terrible thing, and he got killed at night. He was in a dangerous place. So I've actually been wanting to do this kind of video for months, not just one or two months, but many months. And um, I'm finally getting around to it. And, and seeing that video about that young man that uh, got killed uh, kind of uh, set me off, kind of triggered me. And uh, I realized I really do need to get this video out uh, for people. So again, I hope it is a blessing to you. So I'm going to go ahead and start addressing this topic. The topic is... If you're a preacher, if you're a man, and you want to preach for the Lord, should you preach at night? Should you preach in the middle of the night? And number two, should you be going to lewd, that's L-E-W-D, lewd, riotous, and dangerous events and places to preach? Okay, uh, a lewd means... Anything, anything that's crude or offensive in a sexual way, you know, like Mardi Gras, that is a lewd event. Southern decadence, which is like the gay Mardi Gras, that is a very lewd event. So should you be preaching at lewd events, at uh, riotous places, places that are out of control, uh, dangerous places? Should you be preaching there? In other words, sh should you go to Mardi Gras to preach? Or should you go to, go to Southern Decadence to preach? Uh, should you go to gay pride parades and jump in the middle of them and preach? Should you go to bars at night uh, or the red light district, you know, these red light districts in, in cities, uh, places of drunkenness, places of drugs, fornication? Should you go there to preach? Should you put yourself in harm's way and be reckless uh, putting yourself in the middle of drunk fornicators and, and, and allow them to surround you in close quarters and rebuke them all uh, in the middle of their partying. Should you do that as a preacher? You know, uh, well, Reuben Israel does it. And I'm going to do some name dropping here. So, uh, so Reuben Israel does it. Jesse Morell does some of these things. Uh, Brian Cranford, you know, this guy called uh, Bible Brian. Brian Cranford does these things. And many, many other uh, street preachers, well-known, influential street preachers, do these kinds of things. Should you do it? And should they be doing that? So, uh, before I go on, I just want to say, preaching is good. Paul even spoke about in, in his epistles that, you know, if, even if someone is preaching for the wrong reasons, they're, they're doing it, you know, out of strife or, you know, jealousy, or they're just, they're preaching for the wrong reasons. Even that is good. <laughs> even that can help people, uh, you know, uh, unbelievers come to know Jesus. It can be used by God. But having said that, preaching and really anything that you do, that you do needs to be done in the right way. And at the right time and in the right place, sometimes timing is everything. Location can be very, very important in a lot of aspects of life. I, uh, you know, so uh, you can do something and you may be doing it, but you're doing it the wrong way and you end up doing more harm than good. So one example that I thought of real quick is, you know, washing clothes. Let's say you're a husband, uh, you're helping your wife wash some clothes putting the clothes in, the, in a washing machine, you wash the clothes, but you put the dark with the light. You put the bright red clothes and the dark, uh, the other dark clothes with all of the, the light clothes. And now, uh, now your wife's uh, white shirts and everything in there that was white has now become pink or gray. So you did wash the clothes technically, but you ruined a bunch of other clothes and your wife won't be happy. Hey, I have not done that, by the way. I'm just giving that as an example. Uh, another one that, that I have, this second one I have done is, uh, you know, uh, I'm a musician. Uh, I, I've always loved music and uh, my dad, really good musician. 
and uh, I play different musical instruments. One of them is the guitar. And, uh, you know, if you, you could play a guitar chord, but you can play it the wrong way or you can miss, you can miss a note. You know, there's like on a regular guitar, there's six strings. If, if you get one note that's off, just one, one string that's off, the whole chord is ruined and it sounds terrible and it ruins the song and it's unpleasant to the ear. So, uh, you know, this is, this is, these are just examples that I'm trying to bring out that, you know, we gotta be, we have to be right in what we do. We can't just do things in a sloppy or reckless way. So is this a silly question uh, on whether you should preach at night or whether you should go to lewd, riotous, and dangerous places? Um, you know, everything we do in our service to God and our living to God should be in harmony uh, with the Bible. It should match the Bible, the Word of God. So my first question is regarding this matter, should you preach at night or should you preach in uh, evil, you know, dangerous, lewd places? The real question is that you first need to ask yourself, and you should be asking yourself this question about a lot of things, not just this matter, but about a lot of other things too. Uh, the question is, is it in the Bible? That is the question. Is preaching at night in the Bible? Is preaching uh, in a lewd or dangerous place in the Bible? And my gosh, this question, just this question alone, can save you uh, from so many false teachings and so many false practices and so many false ways. But people oftentimes respect persons more than they do the word of God. And they end up blindly following people with, uh, without comparing what's being done with the Bible. Right? So um, they, don't, they just look at what people are doing and they're not comparing it with what God's word says. Uh, so this is the question. Are there any examples in the Bible of men of God purposefully going out at night to preach in the middle of the night? Are there any commandments from God in the Bible saying to someone to go out and preach in the middle of the night. Also, are there any examples of men in the Bible, uh, uh, men of God purposefully going out to lewd, riotous, and or dangerous places to preach? Uh, did Jesus, did John the Baptist, did any of the apostles or evangelists in the New Testament or any prophets of old in the, in the Old Testament, did any of them uh, uh, do this. Did they go to lewd, riotous, and dangerous places? Uh, are there any commands from God in the Bible to go to lewd, riotous, and dangerous places to preach the gospel? The answer is no. The answer is no. There isn't. There is no example uh, of any man in the Bible any man of God in the Bible going out purposefully at night to preach. And neither are there any examples of men of God purposefully going out to lewd, riotous, dangerous events and, and places to preach. There is no account of Jesus, John the Baptist, or any of the apostles or evangelists, or any of the old, you know, any of the Old Testament saints going out to preach at night. There is no account of Jesus, John the Baptist, any of the apostles or evangelists, or any of the Old Testament saints or prophets going to lewd, riotous, or dangerous events and places to go preach. Isn't that interesting? There's no example, not even one. Of all of the examples in the Bible, you think there'd be one, right? With all of this night preaching going on, but there's not. If anyone disagrees with me, then I gladly challenge you, gladly challenge you to find me one, not two, not three, just one example where people are doing this or where God commands it to be done. And I already know what the answer is, but if anyone doubts me, I gladly challenge you to search the scriptures for yourself because number one, then you'll find out what I'm saying is true. And then number two, you will also gain a better familiarity with the scriptures just by reviewing them and going through them, which you may be lacking. No offense. So 
With that said, simple, right? Are there any mentions of it? No, there aren't. So the next question is, why? Why? Why are there no examples of going out to preach at night or going to preach at dangerous, uh, lewd, or riotous events or places in the Bible? You know, the Holy is not the Holy Ghost very specific in what he mentions and also in what he does not mention in the scriptures? You know, there are many people of God throughout history, you know, but the Holy Spirit didn't put every single story and every single account of every single man and woman of God in, in the Bible. There's only specific accounts. So it's very important what the Holy Spirit mentions and what the Holy Spirit does not mention. Very important. You would think that if the Lord wants his servants to uh, be night owls preaching in the middle of the night or, or put, placing themselves in uh, very lewd, riotous, or dangerous places and events, you would think that the Holy Spirit would have shown us examples of that in the Bible and given commandments to do so, but it's not there. It's not even once. So both the Old and New Testament in this regard are very consistent. Talk about consistency. The Holy Ghost, God himself, is very consistent, and he's consistent in this regard. So again, why? Why the lack of mention? Well, we will see why there is a lack of mention in the Bible regarding this when we look at what the Bible does mention. What does the Bible say? There is no confusion or contradiction in the King James Bible. So my point will be made in this video by both the lack of mention of these things, but also uh, by what is mentioned and what instruction the Bible does give us. And it's beautiful, right? So the main, uh, another main point that I'm going to bring out is what, again, what does the Bible mention? What does the Bible mention? The pattern of Jesus Christ is clearly shown in the Gospels. Jesus preached on mountaintops to people on the seashore while he was in a boat, in synagogues, in temples. He preached at feasts uh, during celebration, the celebration of holy days. He preached out in the open air on streets. He preached while he was traveling out in nature. He did all of these things during the day. Here is one example that I'll give you, just one verse, uh, two verses from Luke chapter 21, verses 37 and 38. Listen to what Jesus' routine was while he was in Jerusalem. And in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. And at night, he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to hear to him in the temple to hear him. Again, Luke 21, 37 through 38. Now, uh, you know, there it is. Jesus was teaching in the temple, doing his thing during the day. At night, he would go reside at someone's place in the Mount of Olives. So this, now, don't get me wrong. This doesn't mean that if it's nighttime, uh, we have to, you know, hide underneath our blankets when it's dark and we can't do anything for the Lord. No, uh, we can still help people, but we can, uh, care for people, teach people, pray to people, uh, pray for people. Uh, uh, you know, Jesus, for example, I'll show you a verse here. Jesus healed people in a house in Mark chapter 1 when it was evening. And he did a miracle to feed people when evening was drawing near in Matthew chapter 14. So Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 1, verses 32 through 34a say, And at even, evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and then that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils. So he did this in a home at evening time. And then this is Matthew chapter 14, verse 15, when Jesus did an amazing miracle to give people, hungry people and hungry families, to give them dinner when evening was approaching. Matthew 14, 15, and it was evening, his disciples, and when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place, not a lewd place, not a dangerous place, a desert place. And the time is now past, send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. And it was after that time when Jesus said, no, you give them something to eat. And he did the miracle. Wonderful, right? So, but Jesus never says in passages like these, okay, men, it's evening time. It's almost nighttime. Let's get our banners. Let's go out. Let's go preaching. 
Let's go to the red light district and preach. Uh, there's nothing of that sort at all. Uh, but Jesus' routine was to lodge in someone's house at night, to rest, to sleep, and then get up early in the morning and start his day of ministry. Why would that be? The reason for that is because we are called to be children of the day. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. This is a big principle that we need to remember. It's not insignificant. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 says, Yes, ye are all, excuse me, it says, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. You are called to be a child of the day, not of the night. There is no confusion here as to what the nature of God's children should be. God's children should be people of the light, people of the day. They should not be night owls wandering the streets at 12 a.m. or 3 a.m. Uh, this is not a complicated concept, guys. This is very straightforward, very simple. The only positive accounts, by the way, of God's people purposefully doing anything at night and habitually doing anything at night is when they're doing something like working, like making a living, like the shepherds watching their flocks at night in Luke chapter 2 verse 8, or the disciples fishing, Luke chapter 5 verse 5. In order to pro provide for your family, there are some occupations that require you to, do, to, to work nights. Yet again, there is no record of anyone preaching at night. So what other reason might there be? What other reason would God have for not wanting us to preach at night? The answer is safety. Yes, God wants to keep his people safe. He does not want his people to be reckless. It is common sense that things in general are going to be more dangerous at night. Okay, everyone knows a lot of the crazies and the very violent people are most active at night. There's even a saying in the United States that, that says, uh, you know, nothing good happens after 12 o'clock at night. Nothing good happens after midnight. That's a common sense thing. This is, this is why parents don't want their kids out late at night because it's more dangerous this is common sense. And I find that many people, who, when they try to follow the Lord, they end up following other people instead, and common sense gets thrown out the window. But true spirituality, true walking uh, uh, by the Spirit is full of common sense, wisdom, prudence, full of taking precautions. The two, following the Lord and common sense, they go together. But so many of these influential preachers do what is contrary to common sense and to God's word. It's contrary to God's wisdom by staying out late on the streets and they engage in and influence others. They influence others also to engage in reckless behavior and reckless practices. And I'm going to be use, using this term reckless more and more because that is a very good word, I believe, to describe the kind of behavior and practices that many street preachers have. Reckless. The definition of reckless, real quick, means without thinking or caring about the consequences of an action. Also, reckless means marked by lack of proper caution careless of consequences. And it's so funny, this morning while I was reading the Bible, just doing my regular Bible reading, guess what verse I happened to read? And I believe this is a confirmation from God. Exodus chapter 23, verse 13. Do you know what that says off the top of your head? I didn't either, but I've been going through Exodus and listen to what the Lord God said to his people uh, while he was close to wrapping up uh, uh, speaking to them the statutes and the ordinances to Israel. Exodus 23, 13, the first part says, And in all things, all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect. What does circumspect mean? It means cautious, careful. God said, In all things that I've spoken to you, be circumspect, which means be wary, be cautious. Be careful. In other words, don't be reckless. 
God's wisdom and prudence is for man to behave and serve God in a wise way, a prudent way that includes being reasonable and safe. Listen to what God's word says in Proverbs 22, 3, which is also repeated in Proverbs 27, 12, by the way. Listen to this verse. A prudent man foreseeth the evil. The, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and does what? And hideth himself. Hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. God does not say that when you see evil, you should run into it and preach to it in the middle of it, does he? God does not say when you see evil, a pr he does say when you see evil, a prudent man will hide himself and avoid it. He will avoid it. He will stay away from it, steer clear from it. But a simple person, including a simple preacher who lacks prudence, will rock, will walk right into it pass on and be punished for it, will be punished for it. God wants you to sleep at night, people, and be at home with your family, to be with them, to love them, to care for them, to protect them. He doesn't want you jeopardizing your life, uh, your wife's husband's life, your children's father's life. He doesn't want you to be reckless and unwise. He wants you to be wise as serpents and very careful. He doesn't want you to endanger yourself purposefully, possibly getting killed, taking away your wife's husband and your children's father, your children's daddy. This is common sense. So this leads right into the next point uh, that I will address, which is the lewd, riotous, and dangerous events and places which should be avoided. This topic of safety leads right into this, this main point. Uh, you know, instead, you should not only not be preaching at night, you should be at home with your family or if really needed working, if you really need to work a night shift, but you should not be going to lewd, riotous, dangerous events in places to preach. Where in the Bible did Jesus go to the red light district of Galilee and preach in front of the whores and pimps and drug houses? And the fornicators. Have you ever read a passage like that in the Bible? It's not in my Bible. Is it in yours? Where in the Bible did Jesus or any of the apostles jump into the middle of a gay pride parade surrounded by sodomites with no way of escape and rebuke them and reprove them? Did they jump into the middle of Mardi Gras or Southern decadence with naked women flashing them? No, they did not. They knew better. Where in the Bible did men of God go to beer festivals uh, or bars with everyone drinking and drunk uh, and, and share the gospel with them. It's not found in the Bible because they didn't do those kinds of things. They knew better. They didn't put themselves in situations like that purposefully. So places of fornication and drunkenness, nudity, drugs, violence, and all kinds of gross immorality, uh, they should be avoided. It is unsafe. And even besides the, the, the matter of being unsafe, it's defiling. It's defiling to even be around that. It's not good for anybody, including Christians, including preachers. So again, Jesus, he preached on mountaintops. He preached on the sea while he was in a boat in synagogues, in the temple, at feasts, celebrating holy days, out in the open air, out in nature. Peter, he preached in the temple. He preached in houses. Paul preached in synagogues. Paul preached at the Areopagus, a center for philosophy. He preached at a place of prayer by a river in Acts chapter 16. Where did Peter and Paul go to topless bars or any bar to preach? It's completely absent in the Bible. These men of God were not reckless. They were the opposite. What is the opposite of reckless? Cautious, careful, prudent. That's how we should be, guys. I know of quite a few people in the street preaching community who have been attacked, stabbed, uh, faces split open, bleeding all down their faces from punches or being struck in the head by a wooden board, things thrown at them, head injuries, or just plain old getting beat up. And thank God, uh, I was never seriously injured when I went to these kinds of things, uh, 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 but I got plenty of things thrown at me. 
I did get a bo full bottle of soda thrown at me from 50 feet away that hit me square in the face right on the jaw. Thankfully not on the nose or the eye or anything, but uh, I've been sucker punched. I've been pushed. Uh, people have tried to trip me. I've had tons of different kinds of things thrown at me. And thankfully uh, I've never been seriously injured, uh, but that could have been me. It could have easily been me as well. But to jump into the middle of Mardi Gras or Southern decadence or into the middle of a gay pride parade or into the middle of a drunk and drugged up people and yell at them and rebuke them and offend them, that is simply asking to get hurt. That is a form of tempting God. These preachers are literally asking people to hurt them and to attack them. And when they do sometimes get attacked, and they do, it's taken as, you know, oh, it's this blessing, this blessed persecution and a, a proof of our doing God's work, you know. Uh, but that is not really the case. What it really is, is going back to Proverbs chapter uh, 22, verse 3. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. The street preacher didn't hide himself. Instead, he passed on and went into the middle of it, and he got punished for doing it. These guys are really actually getting punished uh, for tempting God by being reckless, unwise, and foolish. And Reuben Israel once made a comment uh, to me and some other guys while we were either at Southern Decadence or Mardi Gras, and he basically stated, this is not verbatim, but the gist of his comment was that, if you have a life insurance policy uh, and you get killed at Mardi Gras or at Southern Decadence or something, the life insurance company may not pay out if you die because uh, they will argue that you put yourself in harm's way and basically committed suicide. And you know what? The life insurance company has a valid point. I'm not saying that I love life insurance companies. They're full of greed, but uh, they have a valid point. So when Reuben Israel said that, I mean, how much more of a red flag do you need? Even the greedy life insurance companies have more common sense than these street preachers, than these supposed men of God who are, do, who are going out on suicide missions. I mean, it's ridiculous. So my last point is, now that you know what not to do and when and where not to preach, you also need to know how to flee. If you're going to be a preacher, you need to know how to flee, how to escape, and how to hide. Yes, David did it all the time. It's all over the Psalms and all in, you know, 1 Samuel when Saul was after him. David was very cunning. And listen to these verses on Jesus' behavior. Yes, Jesus, the Son of God, God Almighty in the flesh. What did he do? Did he just jump right in the middle of everything because he's God in the flesh? No, he didn't. Listen to this. But he, Jesus, passing through the midst of them, went his way, Luke 4.30. That's when they tried, to, they tried to throw Jesus off of a cliff. Jesus didn't uh, let them do it. He didn't, he passed through and he escaped. Listen to John 10, 39. Therefore, they sought again to take him, Jesus, but he escaped out of their hand. He was very cunning. He knew he had an escape route. He knew how to get away. Listen to what Matthew 10, 23 says, a commandment from God Almighty. It says, but when they persecute you in this city, flee into another. It doesn't say stay there and get beat up. And allow yourself to get killed. And allow them to take the life of your wife. The, the life of your wife's husband and your children's father. It says flee into another city. Jesus commanded to flee. It's very simple. And then look at this. Mark 145. But he went out and began to publish it much. And to blaze abroad the matter. The person that got healed. Insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city but was without in desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. So Jesus was avoiding certain kinds of people and certain kinds of attention. Listen to this, John 7, 1. This is the son of God, the almighty God. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. Why? For he could not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. 
So Jesus purposefully avoided certain regions and places because of people who wanted to do him harm. He was wise, full of wisdom and prudence. He is the wisdom of God. And he avoided the Jewry, places like Judea, and instead walked in Galilee. Listen to what John eleven fifty four says. It says, Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. So because of the persecution and the threat of the Jews, he walked no more openly among a large group of people. He knew how to hide and escape and avoid. And Jesus, the Son of God, the Almighty God in the flesh, lived in this way and lived this kind of life on the earth. How much more do you think, O oh fragile man, you should live your life in a cautious, careful way as a preacher and stop being reckless and stop being careless and stop tempting God and clearly putting yourself in harm's way. How much more should you do that? If Jesus did it, why aren't you doing it? Why are you preaching in the middle of the night and preaching at lewd, riotous, and dangerous places? You need to get back to the Bible, back to common sense, back to God's prudence and wisdom for your sake and for your family's sake too. And for God's sake, God doesn't want that for you. Yes, many of these street preachers are tempting God and teaching others unknowingly to tempt God also. I did it and I repent of it. 